This is Math 6, Lesson 1-5, Understanding Decimals. Expanded form is a sum that shows the place and value of each digit of a number. For example, if I had 1.17, that would be the same as writing 1 plus 0.1 plus 0 0.07. That would be expanded form. One of the things you have to be able to do with decimals is you need to be able to write them in word form. There's a difference between saying 67.3 and saying 67 and 3 tenths. 67 and 3 tenths would be word form. 67.3 means you can read that there's a 67. You know there's a decimal point and you know there's a 3, but you may not know the place values of all your digits. The easiest way to write something in word form is to pay attention to the very last place value. Okay, for example, right here, this 3 is in the tenths position. I know that this means 67. I can write 67. It's a whole number. We've been reading whole numbers most of our lives. The decimal point means and. So if I can read 67, the decimal point is and, and I know the 3 is in the tenths position, I can put that all together and make this 67 and 3 tenths, which I would write like this. Making sure that we spell out every word instead of using any numbers in our words. So 67 and 3 tenths. For the, for the next number, 6.734, we have to pay attention to the place value of the last digit. The 4 happens to be in the thousandths position because it goes tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So this is thousandths. My whole number is 6. So if I read everything after the decimal point, that would be 734. Then I have to tack on the word thousandths because that's the, the place value of the last digit. So this number is written as 6 and 734 thousandths. Notice I didn't say 6 and 700 and 34 thousandths because that would mean there were two decimal places. You can only use the and once and it's to imply that there's a decimal place. So, this number would be written as 6 and 734 thousandths. Okay, make sure you put that THS on there because the thousands place and the thousandths place are diff different. You have to emphasize that. Last number, 0.67. The 7 happens to be in the hundredths position. Okay. It's in your hundredths position. So I could read this as 67 and then add the word hundredths to the end of it. So this would be 67 hundredths. If you know your place value of your last digit, and you can read all the digits in front of it, it's not hard to write a decimal using words. Now we're going to talk about expanded form and standard, standard form. It says the winning car in a race won by 15 hundredths of a second. Write the decimal in standard and expanded form. So 15 hundredths. The easiest way for me to do this is I like to draw lines. My decimal point, tenths, hundredths. So I know I need two decimal places. I have 15, so 15 happens to fit in there quite nicely. I like the leading zero, so I put the leading zero there. So standard form is the normal way of seeing something, which would be 0 0.15. Expanded form says we're going to write it so that it has the place value of each digit. Okay? The place value of the zero is zero. The decimal point is the decimal point. The one is in the tenths position. So this would be expanded form. It would be 0 0.1 plus 0 
five. Tens position, hundreds position. So expanded form, standard form is 0.15, and expanded form is the sum of these, so it would be 0.1 plus 0 0.05. And you can have the leading zero, or you do not have to have the leading zero. Sometimes I like the leading zero, sometimes I don't put it as the leading zero. I'm a little inconsistent, that doesn't necessarily make it wrong. Next problem, there are 4,536 ten thousandths kilograms in one pound. Write this number in standard and expanded form. Okay, 4,536 ten thousandths. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. Decimal point. 4,536, there we go. There's what the number would look like in standard form. So in standard form, it would be 0 0.4536. Expanded form, I have a 0 0.4 plus, the 5 is going to have to have a 0 in front of it, 0 0.05 plus, because it's in the tenths position, Excuse me, the hundredths position. The three is in the thousandths position, so tenths, hundredths, I need the three in the thousandths position. And the six is in the ten thousandths position, so I need a zero in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and I need a six in the ten thousandths position. Notice each place from here to here has one more zero in front of the whole number, the, the, the digit that we write. So there's the answer in standard form. Here's the answer in expanded form. Rounding decimals. You don't always need an exact answer. When you don't need an exact answer, you can round. Remember the rules for rounding. Look at the place value. Find the place value you're supposed to round your number to. Then look at the digit to the right of the digit to be rounded. If the number is 5 or greater, round up and put zeros in the remaining places. If the number is 4 or less, leave the digit to be rounded alone and put zeros in the remaining places. For example, 2.3428 or 2 and 3,428 ten thousandths. We're going to round the 4 because that's the underlying place value. We're rounding the hundredths position. So I look to the right of my hundreds position. Two is less than five, which means since two is less than five, everything after the four gets to be a zero, the four stays. So I have 2.34, the zeros, the four stays and I can put zeros in the end, or I can just say 2.34. Since it told me to round to the tenths position, I have to have a digit in the tenths position. I can leave the, the two extra zeros off, or I can leave them on. It doesn't change the answer. If it said to round to the hundredths position, or excuse me, thousandths position, and there was no digit there, I have to put a zero there because I have to have a digit to the place in the place value which I asked you to round it to. We'll go over more of that later on in class. The next number, 0 0.17347. Again, we're rounding the four. If I look to the right of the 4, it's a 7. 7 is greater than 5, so I'm going to round my 4 up. So my 4 is going to go rounding, going to go up. So it's 0 0.1735. That 4 moves to a 5, the 7 goes to a 0, or I could leave it 0 0.1735 without the 0. Either one of these are correct. You can have the extra 0 at the end, or you don't. It does not change the answer after you've rounded, if you have extra zeros at the end. Number eight, 9.053. Now we're rounding the zero, which is in the tenths position. If I look to the right, five is greater than five, greater than or equal to five. Okay, since five is greater than or equal to five, I'm gonna round up. So 9.0 rounds to a one. Everything after the 1 becomes 0, or I can just let it drop off and it can be 9.1. Rounding decimals. 
grounding is important. It's a very important skill that we need to learn to do and make sure that we take it seriously because you'd be amazed at how many people make simple grounding errors which messes up quite a few other things.